Welcome to this uh, shortwave radio channel, and this is another um, video of, um, of shortwave stories from the past, if you want. Um, a lot of you are enjoying these videos and telling me, oh, well, you know what, this is, it's cool to hear, you know, what it was like and, and how you started. So, of course, um, in 1982, when I started listening to shortwave with that DX100 you see at the top, uh, one of the things that you didn't have that you guys are lucky to have today if you are, um, you know, new to shortwave and its schedules. You know, one of the things that um, I hear often is, oh, well, you know, I wished I could have seen what it was like to listen to shortwave back then. And, of course, yes, there's a lot of stuff that's kind of interesting that has to do with that. And... Um, there were so many signals to listen to, and it was a great time. But at the same time, um, even though today there are less signals, there's still a lot to listen to. Um, and you've got so much new ways of getting the information that didn't exist back in 1982. So, you know, the first couple of years that I listened to shortwave back then in the 80s, um, I didn't know that clubs existed, first of all. It took a while for me to le to learn that there were radio clubs out there, and um, I it was by listening to a, a broadcast, a DX show, or I don't know, I don't remember what, a mailbag show maybe, where I learned that there were some radio clubs, and I had learned that there was a French language club here in Quebec back then. There was a, uh, of course, the Canadian International DX Club in uh, Canada. There was the Ontario DX Association. There's a lot of stuff that. Um, back then I didn't know existed and that uh, that could help of course and it was kind of difficult there was no internet so learning and knowing more about it you know I would go to the library with with books that were you know 20 30 years old about shortwave and it was like yeah outdated books they still had really cool information but a lot of what they talked about was non-existent anymore or so on you know and um Tuning, so knowing when and where to listen to a broadcast was was very simple. You just uh, tuned in and looked and said, "Oh, okay." So at zero UTC, around that region of the dial, because if you look at the TX100, forget about being precise in the um, you know tuning. So you had to search, and so. Around here at zero UTC, there's Radio Berlin. Okay, so I gotta remember that, and you know, I would take notes of what is available, what to listen to. Um, it was finding stations. You know, when you don't have uh, any uh, digital readout, you gotta find the stations, and you gotta, you know, try to know when and where to listen to. The uh, so I would take note. Um, when I started writing stations, one of the things that was common to have back then and that you always wanted was schedules. Today, it might seem like, you know, uh, funny that we were asking for program schedules through uh, postal mail. But a lot of stations actually put you, often they put you on a, a mailing list. Because in order to tell you which frequencies they would use every time they would change, every summer, winter, and so on, they'd send you a new schedule. And they'd say, oh, okay, starting uh, October 25th, you know, 1984, this, these are the frequencies you can uh, listen to Radio Romania or whatever, you know, you were listening to back then. It was the only way of getting schedules. There wasn't really that much more that you could do and uh, so schedules are important and um, today we take for granted but interval signals were extremely important in finding especially on a radio like this finding the station you listen to you know I, I if i wanted to listen to radio rsa south africa i tune in a couple of minutes before and search for the interval signal and then i know that i was tuned there i was I wanted to listen to radio canada international I tune around where I remembered it was around that area of the dial and slowly tune until I heard the interval signal for Radio Canada International. It was a search and an effort that you had to do and if you missed the interval signal, 
Then it was going through each broadcast and listening for a few minutes. Is that Radio Canada? No, that doesn't seem like Radio Canada. Oh, that's something else. Sometimes you'd be fooled. Oh, this I probably is Radio Berlin. Oh no, it's Radio Moscow. Okay, you know it. It it was the times were like that. There was no online of schedules. You know you couldn't. There was no internet. There was no EIBI space de with oh look at that all these stations at this time. And the first time I actually found schedules, I don't remember what club it was but i know that it was a german club and in um somewhere in 1983 four ish and i probably have heard that address somewhere on a mailbag show i heard of a, a german club that had a, a bulletin and every month they would have the bulletin was only shortwave schedules of different stations in, I believe it was only in uh, English and German. So they had English and German broadcasts, if I remember well. And I'm trying, you know, I, mean, I could be wrong, but I think it was the only thing. And I remember asking for a sample copy and being impressed by the fact that now I had times and frequencies of English and German broadcasts around the world. And it was a well-maintained list. And so um, that helped me. There was a paper copy in the mail of something that was really, really helping out. And that was my first encounter with something that had a full schedules of a 24-hour schedules of broadcasts on shortwave. So that was really cool because now it's like, oh, man, I don't have to search anymore. I know that these stations broadcast at these times. And I would try everything. And, you know, with the knowledge I had also, I would probably try things that I probably couldn't receive at home. But I would try them anyways because I was curious. And um, that, that was the way to do it. But apart from that, you were waiting for those schedules in the mail to know when their favorite station was going to broadcast to North America or so on. That was, that was, that was some times, I can tell you that. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up, and more of these shortwave stories coming up.